Schizophrenia affects approximately 2.4 million people in the United States. Studies have shown that the rate of growth in schizophrenia in an urban setting is one-third higher when compared to a rural area with an equal number and randomly selected sample size. The three forms of schizophrenia we're going to focus on today are catatonic, disorganized, and paranoid. They vary in severity, however, each is similar in the fact that people experience some distortion of reality. Paranoid schizophrenia is characterized by delusions and voices that can only be seen and heard by the patient. Delusion is an unrealistic idea held by the patient. For example, a patient may believe that he or she is an undercover agent for the FBI. Voices often tell the patient to commit some inappropriate act, such as killing another person. Suicidal behavior is common among patients with paranoid schizophrenia, so it is important to seek medical treatment if you or a loved one is experiencing symptoms. Unlike paranoid schizophrenia, disorganized schizophrenia is accompanied with multiple physical symptoms. Patients often have trouble expressing their thoughts through written and oral communication because their speech is so disorganized. They also make up their own words, dress bizarrely, exhibit inappropriate emotions, and lack emotional effect. In the most severe cases, patients are unable to carry out simple everyday activities such as bathing and feeding themselves. Suicidal behavior is also a serious symptom of paranoid schizophrenia. The last subtype of schizophrenia that we will cover today is catatonic schizophrenia. Patients experience symptoms such as copying others' behaviors, repeating words, and following ritual types routines. These symptoms can range in severity from being extremely debilitating to overly hyperactive. Back a little bit. If um, when I get into this, if you can give me an extra minute or 30 seconds, and once I get into this, Sir, I think I'll see why. I'm here tonight to actually request John Walsh of the FBI's Most Wanted to make public and request a number one America's number one public enemy. We have a rogue helicopter pilot on the loose inside this airspace. He's also on the loose inside this country. And I am after this report right here, which is a classified document from the Freedom of Information Act within the FAA. When I came down here to speak back in April about the bundling, I went home. I said something because I, had, I could back it up, because I went to the Smith Junior High meeting years ago, and I reminded you of four things I said, which was no smoking, 30,000 seats, solar hot water panels on it and put ice in the arena. And I told you why there's no ice in the arena. I made a statement and the statement was the reason there's no ice in the arena is because somebody had their hand in the pie. Paranoid schizophrenia is a severe chronic mental illness where a person loses touch with reality. Although your ability to function in day-to-day -day life may be better than other forms of schizophrenia, the patients still suffer from short-term memory loss, dull emotion, and an inability to concentrate. When left untreated, this disorder can trigger suicidal thoughts, depression, an inability to work or attend school, and over time, even homelessness. Taking medication regularly and consistently, and simply paying attention to warning signs can help, along with the avoidance of drugs and alcohol. There is no known prevention for schizophrenia, but working with a good team of professionals and having a strong family system are the best known forms of helping a paranoid schizophrenic lead the best quality of life possible. Let's take a moment to answer some questions for people like you. What is the usual age of the onset of schizophrenia? The average age of onset occurs in the mid-20s, somewhat earlier for men and later for women. Although individuals may become ill with schizophrenia as early as childhood or even later on in adulthood. Does the onset involve a gradual evolution of the symptoms or is it sudden? Could you describe the symptoms of schizophrenia? Usually at the time of onset it is not that distinct. This is because the symptoms of schizophrenia may develop gradually, because the sy symptoms may overlap with those of other psychiatric disorders. Although the diagnosis of schizophrenia is difficult to make in some cases because we do not have any biological tests for schizophrenia, nor do we for other psychiatric disorders, the diagnosis of schizophrenia is made on the basis of a person's signs and symptoms over a period of time. The symptoms must be acutely present for at least one month and present to some degree for six months, so it is not an easy diagnosis to make on the basis of a single observation. Is paranoia always a feature? It is so often emphasized in media portrayals of schizophrenics. Both delusions and hallucinations can be what we call paranoid, meaning that the person feels that other people are against them. But voices and delusions can be of other types. A person can hear voices that are telling them how wonderful they are, or a person can hear voices that are telling jokes. Paranoid type is the most common type and is how most media portrays this as the main subtype. 
Is early diagnosis and treatment common? It is not, in spite of the fact that we live in an advanced society with generally good medical care. What studies have found is that oftentimes an individual go untreated for a year or more. Just shake my hand. People affected by catatonic schizophrenia not only have speech issues, but also behavioral issues. They may exhibit inappropriate emotions for a situation. For example, they may laugh during a funeral or while listening to a sad story. Or they may lash out in anger at a happy situation. They may appear unresponsive to their environment and the people in it, not making eye contact or even acknowledging the people or things in the environment exist. Take me home, Peter. Okay, we'll leave that for now. The person may hold themselves in a unique posture for extended periods of time. Okay. You said that you feel that there's something not quite right. You're having some difficulty explaining that. The person may have a waxy flexibility about them, where a second party can move them into a new position and they'll freeze in those positions. The I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand out, but I don't want you to shake it. Okay, okay, please go. Think carefully about what I'm asking you to do. When I put my hand out, as though I'm going to shake your hand, don't take it. I do not want you to shake my hand this time. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Just try and relax for a second. The person may be completely unmovable by the second party, something called opposition. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm trying pop it down this way now. Huh. Okay. okay. Okay, that's fine. Catatonic schizophrenia often comes with visual and auditory hallucinations, which causes the patient to see, hear, and respond to things that are not actually there. Now let's look at a few more viewer questions. Is there a relationship between schizophrenia and aggressive, violent, or criminal behavior? The answer is yes and no. No, in that the vast majority of individuals with schizophrenia are not violent. However, when individuals with schizophrenia are untreated with medication and have a co-occurring problem with substance abuse, then the risk of aggressive behavior is greater than the general public. This is unfortunate for everyone involved and is stigmatizing for those other individuals who have schizophrenia and are receiving treatment and do not pose that kind of danger or risk. What percentage of homeless persons suffer from schizophrenia? Estimates are that at least 30% of people who are homeless have a diagnosis of schizophrenia or other severe mental illness. Individuals with schizophrenia are typically unable to work, so they do not have a source of support and that would certainly put them at risk for homelessness. Their behavior may be alienating to other people, so they may have lost contact with family and friends. They may not have the resources available to find housing or find accommodations. What do you do is that I have a monopoly over the coffee industry? Okay, and so that's the problem, isn't it? That's the complaint, right? Well, uh, I have kryptonite in me. You know what that is, don't you? Kryptonite? And, uh... So if I have kryptonite in me and I drink coffee and soda and no one else knows what to eat, I mean, do you have raw eggs? Do you have raw eggs? Do you eat raw eggs? When I was pregnant, I think boys get pregnant and girls don't. Yeah, that's true. But I ate raw eggs, but, uh... Do you eat raw eggs? No, what do you eat and drink? This is Beatrice. She's a 32-year-old female with disorganized schizophrenia. As you can see, her ability to have a normal social interaction is gone, making it next to impossible. There are two different types of symptoms for disorganized schizophrenia. 
The positive, or overt, represent the excessive or overt actions, and the negative symptoms, which represent a deficit in their personality. Disorganized schizophrenia is a negative system. It affects the person's ability to hold a conversation because they jumble their words and have little understandable meaning. It is considered a severe type of schizophrenia because the patient is unable to complete normal day-to-day -day routines, such as bathing, getting dressed, or even holding a conversation. There is no known prevention for disorganized schizophrenia, but there are plenty of risk factors. They include an exposure to poor nutrition or an exposure to the virus in the womb, or an overwhelmingly stressful life circumstance. The signs of this disorder's onset usually develop sometime between the teenage years and the mid-30s. Let's look at just a few more questions. Can schizophrenia go into remission? Studies show that people do well over time with the condition, that a combination of medication, treatment, therapy, a support system, and learning coping techniques can help deal with the reoccurrences in behavior. Although some patients experience symptoms that get less intense with age, there is no known cure for schizophrenia. In this era of technology, one would think that you could take an MRI or other type of image of the brain of the person suspected of having schizophrenia, and if this severe brain disorder was present, you'd be able to see it. That's right, and that's a very interesting issue that you bring up. There have been many brain imaging studies of individuals with schizophrenia in an attempt to better understand the etiology of the disorder and what is exactly wrong in the brain. We do know that as a group of individuals with schizophrenia have certain differences in their brains from the individuals who do not have schizophrenia. However, because there is not a lot of variation among individuals with schizophrenia as well as among individuals who do not have schizophrenia, we cannot use the results of those tests to diagnose any one individual. In conclusion, unfortunately, there is no way to prevent schizophrenia. However, early intervention and treatment minimizes the severity of symptoms and improves the course of the disorder. Usually, they wait until the child's closer to seven or eight to diagnose early onset schizophrenia. Today, Brianna is six and a half years old. Brianna has been slipping for the last four weeks, so we're exhibiting psychosis episodes seven to eight times a day on a minimum. Some days we lose her totally for the day. One of her, her personalities and voices is seven. Could you do us a favor? Sure. Could you draw us a picture of what seven looks like? Oh, yeah. Seven is a person who is actually shaped like a number. I think seven's got a lot to do with it today because seven likes to tell everybody that there's nobody that lives in Brianna's head. I have been stabbed with forks, tomato steaks. Seven will sit there and punch you dead in the face and then swear up and down, screaming for hours, I didn't touch you, you're a liar. Who's the one that throws chairs at mommy and stabs mommy and beats mommy up all the time? Izzy. Izzy. But that was like earlier. Yeah, that was a while ago, the last time Izzy was that mean. They don't really believe that Seven or Izzy or any of them are hallucinations. They believe they, these are people that Brianna actually becomes. Brianna's dug her own skin up because the spiders were crawling on it. She won't sleep for days because the rats are crawling on the floor. Nicole! Come in. I need you to bring me her shirt, please, baby. Sometimes I'm really scared of her. Like, whenever she's upset, she just, like, she comes at the nearest person that she can get to. Why do you help her? Because she's my sister and I love her. Like, that's what any other big sister would do even if she has that illness. There are several ways you can manage your symptoms while continuing to live a normal life. Educating yourself about schizophrenia offers a more positive view of the illness and makes self-acceptance easier. Schizophrenia is a lot of things. Frightening, misunderstood, stigmatized, often alienating. Here are some things it is not. Schizophrenia is not contagious. Schizophrenia is not a demonic possession or a punishment from God. Schizophrenia is not split personality. Schizophrenia does not differentiate between race, class, or marital status. Schizophrenia is a lot of things, but it doesn't have to be the end. Changing the outcomes and beliefs about schizophrenia starts with you. There is a life after schizophrenia. There is hope. Treating schizophrenia is a long-term process, and with the support of foundation, the patient can live a safe and healthy life.